Hello, precious people of God. How are you? It is Lakedra. I have brought to you all a word of comfort from the Lord. Hallelujah. His word. I want you to realize through the word of God that I'm bringing to you today that God knows your pain. He knows what it's like for to have someone that he loved to walk out of his life. Someone that he's one with and had a covenant with. Hallelujah which was his bride, praise the Lord. And I know it's going to bless you, precious people of God. I know it's going to uplift you. For many of you all that may have woke up this morning not feeling your best and feeling discouraged and depressed or hurt, I know about that pain. I know all about it. But the word of God is the one that is able to bring healing to your heart, and peace to your mind praise the lord and so i want to jump right into it but before i do that precious people of god first of all i want to thank every one of you all for joining me and all of my first time was that one that is hurting standing in the gap for that spouse to come back to the lord and that marriage to be healed and restored god sees your pain so thank you so much for coming i pray that the word of god blesses you and uplift your spirits on today or this evening, or on tonight, and you precious standers that have been standing with me, and all of you precious subscribers, thank you so much as well for joining me, you know I love coming together with you all every day, bringing God's fresh bread from heaven to your hearts and your mind, building up your faith, hallelujah, those of you that are standing for the restoration of your marriage, hallelujah, God wants you all to know, he knows all about your pain, he knows about when there has been a putting away and a divorce hallelujah and so i want to bring to you his word real quickly and so thank you all so much as well even for all your your seeds or your gifts in the work of god may the lord god bless you for your precious works and your deeds unto him he will remember them forever the bible tells us and so may he prosper you in every area of your life as well. Remember what you make happen for others, God will also make happen for you. So thank you so much for sowing in the work of God. Praise his holy name. And so I want to jump right into it in Isaiah chapter 50. I want to start there in verse 1. It's going to really comfort you all. You all are going to be so amazed when you see how amazing god is and his thoughts his mind of when he spoke through the prophet isaiah coming from verse one and i'm going to start from the new living translation hallelujah the bible tells us here in verse one it says this is what the lord says hallelujah was your mother sent away because i divorced her did I sell you as slaves to my creditors? No, you were sold because of your sins and your mother too was taken because of your sins. So here the Lord is saying, I didn't put you away. You walked away from me. My people and my wife walked away from me because of their own wickedness. They broke up the marriage that I had with them. And I know many of you all, precious people, go, we all can relate to this pain when someone walk out, when that spouse walked out on you and abandoned you and walked away because of their sins, because of, of the deception of the enemy or because of something that came about or because they are away from the Lord or because they have walked away because of an ungodly relationship, something the enemy brought in, the sin, the adultery, the betrayal, the hurt. God knows your pain. Here we see God went through the same thing. He said, I didn't put you away. I, I didn't give you away over to some creditors to be some, some slave. I didn't do this to you. I didn't bring hurt to you. I didn't end the marriage. It was because of you. 
It was because of my people that done this to me. It was because of their own wickedness. It was because of, of what was in their own hearts. This had nothing to do with me. Oh, precious people of God, can we all relate? Can we all relate? We know what it's like to see that spouse, that husband. Are you man of God, that wife of yours who you love so much, who you married, who we married. And we was able, hallelujah, to come together with, we gave our life to. We became one with. We was expected to be together until death do us part and we made our vows. We trusted them, hallelujah, to be faithful. And so God was expecting his people, his bride, his wife to do the same thing. Oh, yes. For, for, for those of you that had never heard of this. Yes. God has a marriage, too. Hallelujah. In fact, it is the bride of Christ. She is called the bride of, of Christ. Israel. Hallelujah. The people of God. Those that are in Christ Jesus is the bride of Christ. Those who he paid the price for, who he laid down his life for. He did it for his bride. And so we are made in his image and likeness. Your marriage is made in his image and in his likeness. Well, a man also is joined unto his wife and the two are one flesh. It is an illustration of the way Christ and the church being one. And so when those, when there has been unfaithfulness and rejection and vows have been broken and covenants has been broken, God sees it. He hates divorce. He hates putting away because he knows the pain of it. This is why I'm, this is why the prophet Malachi wrote these things. They were speaking on the behalf of God. They were revealing God's heart and his pain and why he hates it and why he see his people going through this same hurt, this same sorrow. He knows it. He sees that it is cruel. My God, hallelujah. Remember, he became, he became acquainted. He knows about our infirmities. He knows about our afflictions. He's been there himself. My God, hallelujah, I love it. So he spoke these words through the prophet Isaiah. Prophet, The prophet said, this is what the Lord says. Was your mother put away because I divorced her? Did I sell you as slaves to my creditors? So here now he's talking about his children. Oh my God. And so he says, no, you were sold because of your sins. And your mother, too, was taken because of your sins. Hallelujah. Why was no one there when I came? He says in verse 2. Why didn't anyone answer when I called? Is it because I have no power to rescue? The Lord says, why did no one even look to me? Why didn't, why didn't my wife come to me why did my children look to me who is their provider and my wife who 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 i'm a husband to who who i care for look at what he says he says is it because i have no power to rescue no that is not the reason for i can speak to the sea and make it dry up here the lord is saying I, there is nothing i can't do for you there is nothing i wouldn't have not done for you he says, I can turn rivers into deserts covered with dying fish. I dress the skies in darkness, covering them with clothes of mourning. So here the Lord is saying, it's, it's not nothing I, I cannot do. What, why would you walk away from me? The one that loves you with an everlasting love. And you know, precious people of God, we all can relate to this. And I know many of you are saying the same thing. I loved this man or I loved this woman. It, it's nothing that I wouldn't have haven't I wouldn't have done for them. And 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 you see you even right now, precious people of God, still standing, still willing to forgive, still reaching out, crying out, laying down your life so that they may live. Hallelujah, not die and declare the works of the Lord. That's just like our Lord Jesus Christ. 
You see, we who are the body of Christ, we walk in his image and in his likeness. We are going, we are going through his same sufferings. My God, our Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life for his bride who was gone to be in the arms of someone else which is the idols of this world things of this world the cares of this life sin you name it the betrayal that we done unto him and now we're able to feel this same pain you see i'm telling you precious people of god the Lord allows us to go through things so we can feel his pain, so we can identify with his hurt and realize, hallelujah, this is how one we are with him, my God. But there is something good coming. Look at what the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 51. I love it. In verse one, he says, listen to me, all you hope, all you, all who hope for deliverance, all who seek the Lord, consider the rock from which you were cut. The query from which you remind. Yes, think about Abraham, your ancestor, and Sarah, who gave birth to your nation. Abraham was only one man when I called him, but when I blessed him, he became a great nation. Meaning, look how I multiplied. One seed, the descendant of Abraham through Isaac, and blessed Sarah as well, who couldn't even have children, who was barren. But yet I multiplied this seed and turned it into a great nation. The Lord is saying, look at me, the one who can do anything. Those of you that are believing me for deliverance, the Lord is saying, I will comfort Israel again in verse three, hallelujah, and her and have pity on her ruins. My God, her desert would blossom like Eden. Her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Oh, the Lord is saying, precious people of God, how all that you've been through, he's coming through for you. He's here to comfort you. He's here to bring back a desert and cause it to blossom like Eden. A place that is so barren like, like the wilderness. The Lord is saying there shall be joy in that land, filling the air. Oh, hallelujah, filling that life of yours. You know, weeping only endures for a night, precious people of God, but joy is coming in the morning. Praise the Lord. So the Lord is here using Abraham and Sarah's life as a witness for us. How he took a barren woman, but yet made her fruitful. So fruitful. She brought forth a whole nation. My God, she brought forth nations. Praise the Lord. Nothing is too hard for yours, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And nothing is too hard for him to turn your situation around. This is why we want to trust in God. What is one man for God to change around, my Lord? What is, what is that husband or that wife to where God cannot touch them and bring them out and reconcile you back to them? Because he knows the pain of divorce. He knows the pain of putting away. He knows how you were you were there and you you are committed to your vows. But yet that spouse walks out to go be with someone else or just for whatever reason that it, it shouldn't be. The Lord knows your pain, my God. Hallelujah. He says that joy and gladness is going to be found in your land, precious people of God, and in your life. And songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Joy is coming back. He says, hallelujah. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, Israel. For my law will be proclaimed. And my justice will become a light to the nations. Meaning you're going to see God's deliverance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says, my mercy and justice are coming soon. My salvation is on the way. My strong arm will bring justice to the nation. All distant lands will look to me and wait in hope for my powerful arm. Here the Lord is saying, yes, the trouble that has come your way, but I'm trusting you. I know that you're going to turn to me on that day and you're going to see, hallelujah, my power come through and deliver you, precious people of God. 
Yes, trouble has come your way, but count it all joy. For it is a trying of your faith. It is a chance for you to turn yourself over to the Lord. Turn your eyes upon him. Turn that situation over unto him. So the Lord can get the glory. And he will get the glory out of that life. He will get the glory out of that divorce. He will get the glory for that restoration. Because of the separation. My God, it doesn't matter. They will see that spouse of yours that was once dead. Come back to life, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It is for God's glory. And it's going to be by his powerful arm. He says, hallelujah. I love it in verse 6. Look up to the skies above and gaze down on the earth below. For the skies will disappear like smoke and the earth will wear out like a piece of clothing. The people of the earth will die like flies. But my salvation lasts forever. My righteous rule will never end. So here the Lord is saying heaven and earth may pass away, but my promises, my word will be forever. Hallelujah. Nothing can change it for you, people of God. Nothing can change or take away what God has promised you as long as you have your trust in him. Have his word, hallelujah, and his promises, holding on to them, declaring them day and night, waiting for the promises of the Lord, waiting for the coming of God's salvation and deliverance to come forth even in the life of that spouse of yours that you've been standing and interceding for. Hallelujah. That is done all through the power of the Holy Ghost. The Lord will not cause you to be put to shame. He knows about the pain, my God. And then he says in verse 7, here is what he's saying. Listen to me. You who know right from wrong, talking about you, precious people of God, those that are born again, those that has the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. He says, you who cherish my law in your hearts, oh my God, do not be afraid of people's scorn, nor fear their insults. Yes, God sees what you're going through. He says, for the mouth will devour, will devour them as it devours clothing. The worm will eat at them as it eats wool, but my righteousness will last forever. God has said, I'm going to be faithful unto you. My salvation will continue from generation to generation. Praise the Lord. He says, wake up, wake up, O Lord. It says, wake up, wake up, O Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Flex your mighty right arm. Rouse yourself as in the day of old. When you slew Egypt, the dragon of the Nile, oh, hallelujah, are you not the same today? The one who dried up the sea, making a path of escape through the depths so that your people could cross over? Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy, sorrow and mourning will disappear the lord is promising you precious people of god and they will be filled with joy and gladness sorrow and mourning will disappear people of god and they will be filled with joy and gladness get ready hold on to the promises of god he says i yes i am the one who comforts you so why are you afraid of mere humans who wither like the grass and disappear. So the Lord is saying, why are you afraid of the threats that has come from the spouse or from whoever or whatever has come your way of what they have said, how they may have threatened you with a divorce or, or, or have said, I'm not coming back or, or God, I, I don't even believe in anymore. The Lord say, don't be afraid. He's saying, don't, don't be afraid of, of, of their threats or the attacks or the things that you are facing or don't be afraid of the troubled waters. Don't be afraid of the floods and the fire. My God, hallelujah, will be your provider, people of God. Oh, hallelujah. His words are here today to comfort you. The Lord Jesus Christ says, yet you have forgotten the Lord, your creator, the one who stretched out the sky like a canopy and laid the foundations of the earth. The Lord is saying, after knowing I can do all these things and have power over man, yet you're, you're allowing your heart to be afraid. Yet you're thinking that I can I cannot do it. You're worried about what so-and-so have said. You have, you're worried about what you're seeing. The Lord is saying, have you forgotten about your creator? 
the one who created the heavens and the earth and laid the foundation is what he's saying here, precious people of God. Then it goes on and said and said and says, will you remain in constant dread of human oppressors? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. We thank you. The Lord is saying, don't worry about the oppression you're going through by humans or by a human being. Oh, listen to what he says. Will you continue to fear the anger of your enemies? Where is their fury and anger now? It is gone. Oh, the Lord is speaking a word right now already, a prophetic word. Soon all your captives will be released. Imprisonment, starvation, and death will not be your fate. For those of you that are worrying about your finances, for those of you that are worrying about even maybe the health in your body, for those of you maybe be you may be wondering what you're going to do about tomorrow. Will you make it through? The Lord is saying death will not be your fate. Even that marriage will not end in death as long as it has been ordained by God. Remember what God has joined together. No man can separate. It is God's will, as the scripture says, that a man leaves his father and mother and be joined unto his wife. Well, why? Because it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. And so the Lord is saying, that marriage shall be an illustration of Christ and his bride. Where a man leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Speak it and declare it out of your mouth. Begin to declare the word of God every day, saying that your marriage is an illustration right now. Speak those things that be not as though they are even now. My marriage shall illustrate Christ and the church being one. Remember, that's what Ephesians 5 verse 31 says. And 32, hallelujah. And Paul says, and so therefore, hallelujah, a man must love his wife as his own body. And the wife must respect and honor her husband who is the head of her. As Christ is the head of the church who gave his life to save her. Hallelujah. Who nurtured her, cherished her, washed her with the water. And the water by the word purified her, made her holy and beautiful. This is how a man must love his wife. Praise the Lord. You know, marriage is so beautiful and the enemy wants to come in and take it, but he will not. He will not. The Lord is saying he's going to come through and deliver you. He says, my mercy and justice are coming soon. My salvation is on the way. Isaiah 51 verse 5. He says, my strong arm will bring justice to the nations. All distant lands will look to me. The Lord is saying, look to him. And it says, and wait and hope for my powerful arm. The Lord is saying, wait and get ready for his powerful arm to come through for you, people of God. You know, I've heard so many of your stories. I know, I know about the heartbreak. My God, I'm standing with you guys. But I'm going to tell you something. My trust is in the Lord. I have to keep my eyes on his word. I have to constantly hear them day and night. My God, he is my only source. He is my comfort and he's yours too, people of God. Where else can you turn? There is no arm that is greater. No arm that is more powerful. No arm that is more mighty than your Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is a man of war himself. And his spirit is in you. His spirit is with us on this earth. Hallelujah. For God is among us. It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. He is able to take that stubborn heart from, from that spouse of yours. He is able to take it out. Hallelujah. And give them a new heart and fill them with his Holy Spirit and cause them to walk in his ways. He's able to design that marriage. And has it to illustrate in Christ as the and the church being one. The Lord knows all about the putting away. God hates it. He was also, hallelujah, rejected by his own, the Bible tells us. By his own flesh, of his flesh and bone of his bone. Oh, but let me tell you, when he laid down his life, it was restored back. And as we lay down our life. As we begin to intercede and pray and look to the Lord, let his will be done. Hallelujah. Not our will, but his will. 
Allow him to come in and do the work. The Lord will finish what has been started in your life. He will make things good. He will come through and deliver. Praise the Lord. We give him all the praise, all the glory, for there is none like him. The Lord is saying he's supplying all of your needs, precious people of God, when we look to him. Praise the Lord. He says soon all captives will be released. Imprisonment, starvation, and death will not be your fate. Hallelujah. But then I love it. I want to go a little further before I close and we pray. For I am the Lord your God who stirs up the sea, causing its waves to roar. My name is the Lord of heaven's armies. Oh, so we know God is a warrior. He says, and I have put my words in your mouth. See, the Lord is saying, hold on to my word. Hallelujah. And hidden you safely in my hand. No weapon that is formed against you, precious people of God, will prosper. You are hidden safely in the Lord's hand. He says, and he goes on and says, I stretched out the sky like a canopy. The creator, hallelujah, laid the foundation of the world, the foundations of the earth. I am the one who says to Israel, you are my people, meaning you are my people, precious people of God. You did not choose me. I chose you. The Lord says, I, I, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I am the one that made a covenant with you that I will not break. Praise the Lord, because it's through his blood, people of God. So you have nothing to fear. I pray that the word of God has comforted you and has allowed you to see and hear God's voice for yourself from his word. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is so faithful. And we give him the praise. We give him all the glory and all the honor that he sees pain today. He sees the hurt. He sees the betrayal. He sees the divorce and the separation. But trust him. Know that he's one with you. Know that he knows and has been acquainted with your afflictions and your infirmities. He carried your sorrows. He bore your pain. By his stripes we were healed. Remember the word of God says he was wounded for our transgressions. In Isaiah 53, 5, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. Our savior. Our groom, hallelujah, our husband, people of God, will he forsake you? No, he will not. He says, even if your mother and father forsake you, yet not I, oh my Lord, God will be with us to the end. Let's hold on to his word, the covenant. Praise the Lord. We are married to the Lord. He is our Lord. He's our God. And one thing I love about him, he says he's even married to the backslider. Praise the Lord. So we see how God is the God of reconciliation. He hates putting away. The Lord is saying, I'm, I'm loving you with an everlasting love. Nothing can separate us from his love, people of God. This is why the Lord says, I don't want man and, and his wife to be separated. I want them to be together unto death, do them part. My God, hallelujah. And so now we're going to pray. Trust him, precious people of God. Oh, Father God, thank you. For this precious word that was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Oh, thank you, Lord God, for your promises that are yes and amen. They are a guarantee, Lord God, for you is not a man that you shall lie. Neither the son of man that you shall repent. Lord God, we thank you that you are bringing prodigals back. You are bringing husbands and wives back. You are restoring marriages. You are healing them. Father, we thank you. We are asking, Lord God, that you also bring peace and strength to everyone that is standing on today or this evening or on tonight. Lord God, that is needing comfort. Oh, Father God, we have heard your word. Yes, let it be done in Jesus' name. Let it be, Lord God. We are asking it to come forth. Yes, in a mighty way. Our deliverer, our king of kings, Lord Jesus, and our Lord of lords. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, but if you if you sent your only begotten Son, who you didn't spare, we know you'll give us all things that we ask for in his name. Oh, thank you, Father. We thank you. Thank you. Yes, do a mighty work, Lord God. And for that one that has 
come on that has never received you as their Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus. I pray that you move up on their hearts. I pray that you will begin to do a mighty work in their life and draw them closer to you. I pray that they will surrender unto you in Jesus' name. I pray for that one right now that has never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Ask him to come into your heart and forgive you for all unrighteousness for he paid the price for you. Ask him to restore you again unto him. Hallelujah. Give him your life for the Lord can turn the ashes into beauty. Hallelujah. He can restore that home and that marriage and also save that spouse. Praise the Lord. Trust him on today. And Father, we just thank you. We receive your goodness. Thank you for allowing me to be here to pray and intercede and to join in with your people. We're trusting that you're coming through as your word has spoken on today in the name of Jesus. And all the people of God give you praise. We come against the works of the enemy. We stand against every lie. We, we, we stand against every attack. We bind it in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for delivering us from all evil. In Jesus' precious holy name, we pray and thank you and give you all the praise. And all the people of God says, amen, amen, and amen. Believe his word, people of God. Know that he is for you. And as long as God be for us, who can be against us? Remember that I love you and God loves you too. And until next time, bye-bye.